Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Okay, this is about uh, the Manny Pacquiao Algeri fight with how a lot of people were saying, um, you know, Manny Pacquiao is taking this guy lightly, he's going to get upset, or whatever, you know. Uh, all, all, all I really want to say is Manny Pacquiao is not taking Algeri lightly. Uh, trust me on that. In case you haven't caught on by now, this is the same way they've sold you uh, so many Manny fights. Nobody ever believes a lot of Manny's opponents have uh, legit chances against them. So they say Pac is taking the guy lightly, and then all of a sudden, boom, the guy has a chance now. And you'll be willing to buy the fight. Uh, uh, Man yeah, Manny's been playing basketball, right? And that's what we've been hearing. Uh, he's not focused because he's playing ball. Well, how many times? He, he plays ball before every fight, and we know this, you know? And how many times have we heard uh, Freddie Roach say that he likes Pacquiao to play basketball? Um, countless times, because it keeps Pac's cardio good, and it keeps him happy, okay? Um, Manny trains, you know, eight weeks for most tough fights, and uh, two of those weeks are just uh, light training without Roach. Then him and Roach get down to business for about the other six uh, yeah, he's only gonna have, uh, five weeks for this fight with Algeri, with Roach. Um, but, but, you know, that's sufficient. You know, really is. I wouldn't necessarily call that, uh, taking him, like, lightly. I, I mean, you could say it's taking him lightly, but not so lightly that, uh, to the, the point where, uh, everyone's getting worried he's actually gonna lose. I mean, it's about the amount of time that he needs for this, uh, caliber of opponent. You know, uh... You know, yeah, like I said, uh, he only needs about five weeks, you know, because, he, like, he's always in shape year-round, uh, just like Floyd. He needs the five weeks just to, like, spar, uh, get sharp again, get his, um, you know, get his technique down, work out the game plans they're going to use to defeat Algieri and et cetera, you know. And, uh, and, and Pac has uh, some great par sparring partners for this fight. Um, I've heard some tall boxer type names out there. Uh, also some just uh, really good boxers. Uh, Victor Postal is a name I heard. Mike Jones. Uh, I can't remember the other ones. But I heard some other uh, really good names too. Like, okay, ask yourself this. Like, do you, Does anyone out there really, like think Algeria is going to win? Like other than Algeria's family? No, okay, we all agree, yeah, he has a slim chance, okay, about as much chance as uh, any other uh, heavy underdog. Um, and plus, have you guys seen, like, the footage of uh, Pac training for this fight? He looks really, really good, okay? Like, not as, not, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying he's 2009, 2010 Pac, you know, but for a 35-year-old man, he's looking great actually for his age i mean he's looking amazing you know and then you got to realize like algeri barely beat ruslan okay and ruslan uh wasn't even really throwing any punches he was just following him around the ring all night like a like a puppy dog okay and uh he he was never cutting the ring off uh and pack is great at cutting the ring off uh, he, he's, Pac has never had any problems with tall fighters. Uh, Pac throws tons and tons of punches. Uh, he's great at doing everything Ruslan didn't do and needed to do to win the fight, okay? And if Ruslan would have just threw like 10 to 15 percent, uh, more total punches, he would have won that fight without a doubt, okay? And no one would have been, a, a, like, been even able to argue that, okay? So it really was a close fight fight he just eked that out okay so like how does anyone seriously think Pac isn't gonna blow this dude out the water I mean Al Algeria's team accepted this fight because it's a I mean it's a big payday first of all but it's a win-win situation you know if he wins he wins big okay uh, if he loses he loses to the best Plus, he still gets to keep his title at 140, okay? So he's still champ, okay? I mean, that's like uh, one of the number one reason this fight was made at 144. It wasn't because Pac wanted to 
you know, test his body out for the 140. I mean, Manny can make 140 with ease. That's his walk around, walk around weight for a crying out loud. I mean, he has to eat his ass off to fight at 147. And he never enters the ring weighing uh, over 150. So, like, how can't he make 140 comfortably? I mean, that 144 so we can see how he feels, that, that's BS, okay? 140 has and uh, always will be his best weight. You know, he stayed at Welter for so long because uh, there were just so many big fights to be had. Plus, they were hoping the uh, Floyd fight was going to happen. But now that the Floyd fight, uh, you know, doesn't look like that's ever, ever going to happen, uh, and he can't be the linear uh, welterweight champ because Floyd won't give him the ch uh, the chance to be the champ because you got to 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 be the man. You got to beat the man, and if he don't have the chance to beat the man, he can't be the man. Okay, so he's gonna go to 140 and become the linear champ there by uh, defeating Danny Garcia. You know, if uh, if the Floyd fight ever does somehow materialize, he can go back up. No problem, you know, pro no problem. But fighting at 140, it is probably, uh, it's not probably, it is best for Manny. He won't, he won't be fighting guys who have, uh, 10 to 13 pounds on him in every single fight. I mean, he'll finally be, uh, be even weight with the guys at 140, you know? Why should Manny have to fight, uh, giants, you know, when... Floyd stays fighting blown up lightweights and junior uh, welterweights when Floyd is actually a full fledged welter. I mean, he weighed 160 pounds on fight night for the uh, Madonna rematch. You know, when Manny fights at welter, uh, Sometimes on fight night, he weighs less than he did at the weigh-in. And if he does come in heavier, it's never by more than uh, two, two and a half pounds, you know? That tells you right there that he is not a full-fledged welterweight. So why should he be forced to have to stay at a, a weight that, you know, I mean, he's at a disadvantage at in every fight. You know, he's still winning, but he's still at a disadvantage. You know, so why can't he fight at his best weight, okay, and especially if Floyd won't fight him, I mean, what's the reason, there is no reason, you know, uh, he beat the dog shit out of Cotto and Margarito, and Mar Margarito, I mean, Floyd was scared to death to fight him, uh, Bradley, Marquez, I mean, he proved he can go up and still dominate, you know, they, and, uh, they said, like, from the beginning that he, um, wasn't staying at Welter for very long, you know, but he stayed so long because good fights kept getting made, you know, big money fights. Uh, the only fight left for him at Welter now, well, the only fights is Floyd or Thurman. And, like, uh, the, we know, whatever about the Floyd fight, uh, and, uh, you know, Thurman, one of my, uh, probably like top five favorite fighters right now. I mean, I'm, I love, I love this dude. I can't, I've been following his career forever. I expect big things from this guy, okay? So don't think I'm slighting Thurman in any way, shape, or form here, okay? Um, like I, like I said, but Heyman, uh, Heyman isn't gonna let Thurman fight Pack right now, okay? Because chances are, you know, he will lose, okay? In a year or two, He'll be the favorite, okay, and he'll probably win. But right now, you know, not a good time for him. He's just still too green. I mean, uh, Soto Carras rocked Thurman, okay. Diego Chavez rocked Thurman. I mean, yeah, he KO'd them both, but they are nowhere near Pacquiao's level. So just trust me, Heyman isn't going to allow his, uh, next big thing, big cash cow, to go in with Pac when he's still too green. You know, give him even, you know, just a few more fights, even a year, and then that matchup can be, like, r literally, like, really talked about, okay? But just for right now, I mean, this year, 2015, I don't know, maybe the end of 2015, we'll have to see how that plays out, but for the next, say, six months, no, no, okay? But back to uh, Pac versus uh, Algeri. 
you know, Pac is looking to make a statement in this fight, you know. So when he officially goes to 140, he can get the Garcia fight immediately, you know, hopefully. But I, I think Heyman will let Garcia take that fight, you know, since Herrera already beat him and after the Salka fight and all that, and Garcia's uh, stock has just dropped so far lately. And I mean, I like the kid, he's a good fighter, but you gotta admit his stock has plummeted, okay? Um, so why wouldn't Heyman, like, you know, be ready to uh, get a cash-out money fight on this kid? And then, you know, let him build back, build his career back up, you know? He's not going to do that with someone who, like, you know, is technically thought of as unbeatable in Thurman, but someone who's already looked at as they have already been beat and shouldn't even be holding that title to begin with. Yeah, he'll let that fight go to get a big payday because Heyman's going to get freaking rich, you know, richer off of that fight. So he'll let, he'll let that happen. I have really no doubts he'll let that fight happen. Um, and then, like, it, it, you know, the, and then if, if he can become the linear champ by beating the man, Danny Garcia, at 140, you know, then Pac can even clean out 140 if he wanted to, um, if Floyd don't step up and fight him anyway. I mean, how good would that look on, uh, Pac's resume when he retires, you know? That Pac was, you know, just cleaning house his whole career. You know, when he was at featherweight, he cleaned up. He cleaned up at 130. You know, he was the best 135-pounder when he fought in that division. He was the best 140-pounder when he fought in that division. Then he goes up to 147. Uh, was, at, for one time, he was uh, the, he was either for a, a year, for two years, he was the number one welterweight and number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter. Um... And he cleaned out that division as best he could, being that the the Cold War was going on. You know what I mean? So, uh, and and then like just think of it. And then like the Floyd fight doesn't materialize. And then at the end of his career, he goes back down to 140, becomes the man there. And if he can even uh, become the man and clean it out, and then retire as linear champ at 140. I think that's his uh, best way to end his career if he can't get the Floyd fight. Because he can't become the linear champ at 147. You know, he can't unless Floyd will fight him. So what's he supposed to do? You know, he wants to be the man at one of these divisions and Floyd won't give him the chance. So obviously he got to go to 140. You know, think about it. Uh, and then he can retire as a linear champ again in a division Boom, you know, I think that would look great. I think that's the best way to end his career if he can't get the Floyd fight. And he can still uh, work on cleaning out 140 along with fighting Floyd if that fight should happen, you know. Uh, Pac's, Pac's legacy is uh, set with or without Floyd. You know, he's had wars and just divisions and fights that, his legacy is set. Pacquiao is Pacquiao, okay? Uh, you know, Floyd, Floyd's kind of isn't. You know, he's always going to be, like, looked at as, why didn't you fight Pacquiao? Amongst others, such as, like, Paul Williams and Margarito and Costa Zoo. I mean, you know, there's, there's a, that's a big, big black eye for uh, his legacy. But Pax is set. And becoming the uh, linear champ at 140 at the tail end of his career only makes it that much better, in my opinion. I mean, look, he—I would have never uh, guessed he would even be would have been um, fighting at 32, 33 years old. I, I thought he would have retired at that point in time, but he kept fighting, you know. And I thought he would have retired at that time because he's a, uh, um, you know. Uh, been in a lot of wars, action first fighter. I mean, he might be, uh, you know, 35, but he is an old fighter. You know, uh, uh, you know, the way you fight determines how long your career can last. You know, someone like, like Ray Mancini, I put even in the comments earlier, uh, Ray Mancini, 32 years old, was a young man, but an old fighter and had to retire, okay? So that's why I thought Pac would be done around that age, too. But, you know, he was able to uh, be 35 years old and dominate a um, pound-for-pound pound top welterweight 
in Bradley at the tail end of his career. I mean, that shows you how talented the guy was. Imagine how he would have performed uh, against Bradley that night, say if it was like the 2009-2010 uh, Pacquiao. I mean, wow, you know. We all know that uh, he's, he's going downhill, and he was still able to perform so well against a top, top fighter. That lets you know where he really, really was when he was at his peak. The guy was amazing, okay? Like, you can't take any credit away from him. I mean, just like I said, man, I always say, give, give, give credit where credit's due, man. But Pac, not taking this guy lightly. Um, he's just preparing about as much as he needs to prepare for this fight. You know, they've been using that, uh, Pac's taking this guy lightly for the last, you know, five years. Four years, five years, you know, uh, just to, you know, get interest in the fight. It's just another one of those cases. Just It's just a uh, hype to sell the fight to you guys, you know. So, uh, you know, Algeri fans don't get too happy because your guy ain't going to have an easy fight. I do not see that. And Pac uh, fans don't get too sad because you think your guy's going to have a tough fight. You know, uh fight should probably even be on um regular... Uh, HBO, you know, as should have like Floyd Maidana and Floyd Maidana won and Floyd Guerrero and Floyd Ortiz and uh, Pacquiao Rios. I think the fans get ripped off on a lot of these fights like that, but, you know, it's just the nature of the business uh, with the, the top name fighters, you know. I mean, uh, Oscar was the cash cow and he had fights that weren't on pay-per-view, you know. You gotta remember that, but then you look at like people like Mike Tyson, he uh, eventually would never have a fight that once he hit that pay-per-view string, I mean, he was fighting Francois Botha on uh, pay-per-view, okay? I mean, they're Peter McNeely, uh, pay-per-view, uh, Kevin McBride, pay-per-view, Danny Williams, pay-per-view. I mean, certain fighters, they can just do that because they have enough fans. So, you know, you can't blame the uh, promoters and businessmen for being, uh, you know, willing uh, to take advantage of the fans' love for that fighter to give them the money to watch them fight. Uh, that's, you know, just that's all I'm going to say on this topic. And uh, let me know how you guys feel on this subject and uh, of anything else I might have commented on throughout here. All right, Thunderdome Boxing, if you haven't subscribed uh, now... Go ahead and do so. Uh, you don't want to miss out on any great news. Um, and uh, go check out the NSK uh, Radio Show Podcast and Boxing Forum Facebook page. Uh, the links will be in the description box and comments to the uh, videos I post. All right. Again, Anthony from Thunder Don't Boxing Talk uh, saying stay safe as always.